two. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Oregon Data Users Workshops, the first session. And we're, first, we're going to hear about uh, data.census.gov from Kaneen Reese from Census Bureau Headquarters. Uh, go ahead, Kaneen. Sure. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. All right. So I wanted to start off talking to you about um, our transition to data.census.gov, our life after fact finder, fact finder being no more for the census data dissemination, and just show you what we have instead. Um, gosh, let me. There we go. All right. So I think most of you have a pretty good sense of, of what we're doing. Just a quick overview is, is that everything just is based on the um, census data API, which is our application programming interface. And how this is different is no longer we have static tables where a data provider has to continue to, anytime you view something, it has to be a new delivery, a new review. Um, but it's an individual estimate and a series of individual estimates that are available. But on the right side, you see what it can, um, what it can produce. And it can produce things like your basic table in the far right, the things that you're used to maybe, um, but then also data visualizations, um, different graphs and charts, as well as maps. All of those things are available, and we actually consume the API as well within um, data.census.gov, just as if a third party, um, somebody was using our API to um, create their own data visualizations, their own dashboards. So that's kind of the basis. It's definitely a long-term project that, that we're working on. Um, we're working through an agile um, development, software development cycle, which means that um, we're building and then releasing it to the public to review. You give us comments, and then we build some more. So with that, it means that we're not going to have necessarily the final product that you're looking at. Um, a little different than how we've always done things at the Census Bureau, um, but it's kind of the way that we've turned because we don't want to be in a situation where we build and build and build something for a couple of years and then release it to you and you don't like it. We really want to be able to, after, after all of this time of building and developing um, this platform, we want you to like it and want, we want to include all of the things that um, you need um, to use in a, in a dissemination platform. So that's kind of the basis of what we're doing. I want to give you an update of where we are since we are developing. Our latest update is that we have population estimates data available in data.census.gov. It is only one first table that is available, but at least it gives that big number, that big main population no number we need um, by nation, state, and county um, and place. They're working on delivering more, but just as you're getting used to data.census.gov, they're getting used to it as well as far as delivering to our API and making sure that we have the appropriate metadata available so that it can be consumed and be released on data.census.gov. So they're in the process of doing that, but they are planning to continue to um, work on this. Um, we've built them a tool that will help them to do this and help some of our other smaller data providers within the Census Bureau, you know, big ones like ACS and Econ Census and some of the other bigger econ programs. They all have um, people who disseminate for them um, within the Census Bureau, and so they've got that covered. But you've got all these smaller surveys, um, so we wanted to make sure we have a tool that they can join data.census.gov as well. So that's kind of the first step, letting you know. And that's on the, migra the data migration side. On the code release side, um, we are planning to release on October 20th a, la a latest update. Um, that will include things like a web page uh, for search update. So we have our search has been returning tables and maps. But on the data.census.gov side, they have still been using their third-party search um, to create, to, to have the return of those web pages. And so what we're doing is we've built our, our web page search within our own search on data.census.gov because eventually we're taking over the search for census.gov so we'll be fully integrated. That's the long-term goal 
is that we're not just building this as a separate tool. It's truly a platform that will eventually be part of census.gov. So when you go and look for your data, you'll be searching for not just those web pages and not just the data tables, but kind of all of it and all that's available um, based on your subject or your um, geography that you put down. Now we're also continuing to address data user feedback. Um, we've had the AFF shutdown happened in March on March 30th. After that, we definitely had a significant increase of people using data.census.gov. We definitely had a lot of people that were still holding on. And um, even though the latest data were not being released on American FactFinder, there were still people holding on and um, maybe some of the people who was on this call and still using um, the site. So it was a big kind of jump over for people on April 1st when they started using um, data.census.gov. So we definitely saw a big increase lots of more page views, different people using it, and also a significant number of increased user feedback because, again, that is what we're basing everything on. We want to hear the things that are missing um, from the site that you need or things that are just not hitting the mark. Definitely have gone back and forth with some things, and I want to bring that up in just a minute. <clears throat> but also mention really quickly, <coughs> excuse me, that for our build now, we really are focusing on in the next few months in fall is preparing for 2020 decennial. Our release of decennial will be in spring of 2021. That's when it starts and then it's a flow basis to get all of the different data and geographies out. And so we're working on a more robust download. Big thing with download is to make sure that we can have um, the population estimate available for the states for all the blocks in the state. Not a big deal for some of our smaller states, but a huge deal when you're talking about, you know, California and Texas, some of those bigger, bigger states, um, even Oregon, we have to make sure that we've um, covered and be able to do that. Also, those collections of geography, it's something we've been working on for over a year of um, one-click selection. So we've gotten a lot of those, you know, all metros in the United States you know, all counties in the United States, those things. The biggest one we're looking at and we hope to release in the next couple of months. Um, actually, I'm pushing for hopefully the first part of November, so we definitely want to get it in before the ACS five-year release when it's really usable, is um, all of the ZICTAs. So ZICTAs are the zip code tabulation areas that Decennial and ACS use. So when someone's going in, they want to be able to have all victims by state. Now that's an interesting one because in geography division, they didn't they don't deliver it that way. And so that's something that we're working on. It's this idea of kind of an enterprise solution to create things, not just kind of in a box and create things that our group for data.census.gov and the API is creating these things. We want to make sure that it's a Census Bureau wide. So geography division is responsible for creating those geographies and those shape files, maps, making sure all of those things are then delivered to us and that we're not doing things as side projects, which is a lot of what ASF did to create all those geographies. So please bear with us. They're coming. We're working on them. It's just um, we're just kind of trying to get all of the census involved and, and working in the right direction. You're actually seeing this in all of it. In census 2020, same thing with our collection process, one big collection process instead of all of these different siloed uh, collection process, same thing with dissemination, that it's easier to use, have standardized um, databases and software and all of those things. But with that, of course, it takes, it takes some time to get everybody on board. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a little background about what we're working on and what we're building on. Always would love to have your feedback and hear what things that you would like to see. Um, one of the things I did want to show you really quickly is with our feedback, we do have a top 10 that we've heard. Now, this is just the feedback and how we produce this to let everybody you know, know what we should really be focusing on. And this is what we call the AFF one. So it's since uh, April 1st until the end of August. All of the things that people have been asking for. So we've gotten 4,800 comments and feedback in those several months. 
But the interesting thing is those top 10 things that you're seeing there is about 63%. So well over half of everyone that comments are commenting on the same thing, which does really, really help us as far as development know what we really need to focus on. So by far, we need to focus on data availability. We need to make sure that the data that were available in ASF are now available in our new site. So we're in the process of finishing that, but we still need to have data providers approve it so that we can release it. So some of those things are still straggling. Um, still sitting there waiting to be finished. But then we're also seeing some other things, um, things that we then provide to the data providers um, based on limited resources, ACS and uh, econ, some of our surveys and programs said, well, I was thinking about just saying from 2010 forward. Some of the data users have said, no, I'd really like all of the data. So like with ACS 2005 going forward, so that's some of the things that we've provided to them, and it's all based on the feedback that we've gotten that we're able to like aggregate and give people. So navigation is always an issue um, with people. It's a very different site than how AFF was. Um, some people don't necessarily know to go to the advanced search, which allows you to have those drop down um, drop down options and to have more of a faceted filtering experience instead of a single search bar. And then just other general navigation issues, filtering within the um, faceted filtering, those, those drop, drop downs, big one as you see is 35% of people just saying about Zictas. Something with Zictas and ACS, either where is it, how do I get the pseudogeography, how do I find those things, and then just basic inconsistencies, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure AFF had three separate panels for drop downs and this is all one big panel. So it's definitely different. How do I navigate it? Um, and then download, we've talked about that, not just having a more robust download so that you can have larger downloads, but making sure that the, um, the format of the download, you know, our download is actually a flat file, a CSV flat file, which is machine readable absolutely perfect if you want to put this in a computer and do some de manipulation that way. But if you're just planning to take this and download it and send it to a friend or a colleague and um, expect them to kind of digest it, it, it doesn't look like a table, so it might be a little bit difficult. So we hear a lot of that. <clears throat> Performance will always be an issue, especially as we're adding new data sets, more data. Um, and it's something we're constantly always working on, especially if we're seeing freezing or lagging, um, which happens sometimes when you're trying to download some bigger data sets. Um, we talked about a little bit that those one-click geographies, what we call the pseudo-geographies. Um, almost 50% of people requesting something to do with zip does, those zip, those zip code tabulation areas. And then from there, we so it, this really does help us kind of focus to see what people really want. Printing, we have several printing options. I'll go through a demo and show you uh, the options that we have for printing. Um, but sometimes it's hitting the mark and sometimes it's not. Sometimes people want um, something more in an Excel file and some people want something that's more of a PDF. So working from there. And then address search. This is an integrated ad address search. We actually have one from our geography division. We call it our geocoder API, but that's not necessarily what everybody wants. They want something that's integrated within the search um, and that if you put in an address that it comes back and tells you, this is your track, it's your block group, here's your information. And that's definitely something that we're working on, especially with 2020 coming around. Search relevancy, making sure those tables come up, it come in at number nine. Um, all the different, different types of, you see in the bottom, things like tagging issues, that's kind of an internal thing so we can know if that's something that's from the data provider that might have made a mistake or, or something like that. So lots of things that we're trying to really tease out where the problems are so that we can internally share this and figure out where we need to go. And then finally, mapping. Mapping by far is the thing I'm most excited about. But the problem with mapping is that when it works, it works. And when it doesn't, it's a big fail. If, if you're trying to find a map in it and, and you're trying to go to Oregon and it goes to Kansas, that's not really a great experience. 
So um, definitely working to make sure that the mapping function is um, tip top because we know when it does work, people really, really like it. So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick overview before we started the demo of just kind of where we are, but also how your feedback is, is fueling um, our development and the things that we're really focusing on um, in the next several months, especially as we're marching towards our release in spring of 2021 of those 2020 estimates from Decennial. All right. So five components of a demo, always trying to find different ways to show you and to show the public how to navigate the site. Um, so we've been around for a, a couple of years, so we definitely have more advanced than novice users. So I wanted to start at just some basic things about just searching, trying to find um, um, some data and then going down to something more specific, comparing over time or comparing across geographies and then even pulling in some business data. So just starting out quickly, I'm going to stay on this page and then bear with me. I've got to switch over to, um, sorry, I've got to switch over to um, my next, okay, here we go. All right. I'm here. All right. So we're on the site of data.census.gov. You can get there directly. This is publicly accessible to everyone. And then from here, I wanted to show you a couple of ways that you can start doing some basic, um, some basic navigation. Now, you can use the single search bar. Um, you know, we're still developing, so big sentences and whole paragraphs would be really hard for our entity recognition to kind of tease out and figure out what you're doing. But a geography, a topic, some things that you're looking for is a great way to start. But in general, a lot of people start with just, um, just an area. So I'm just looking at Marion County, Oregon, clicking enter. And then you see here we have um, what we call a feature result. It's not the estimate you always, may, maybe you're wanting, maybe you didn't want the population, but it's just something we offered up. We are the Census Bureau. We are in the business of counting people, so I thought we would be a best to go ahead and, and give you a population number if you're interested. At least gives you some sort of idea of what we have, and then maybe you can drill down from there. So from here, this is our all results page. Allows you to see tables, but also the estimates by maps and pages. If you scroll down, you can then see maps and then scroll down to pages. Now, if you've used our site before, it used to have um, right in this area, it was the first table was a preview. So you saw that part of the table. So we've taken that out because we had a lot of feedback about people wanting to have a larger list available um, and see all of those tables that are available or at least more. So we've done that very recently. Also have a link to our public use microdata that you're available to tabulate your own and create your own custom tabulations. If these estimates are not hitting the mark of what you're looking for, we'll talk about that in the next session, but showing you that it's here. And we also have something called our profile. So this is our geography profile. It's just a, a visual display of the data that are available, some of our key estimates that we have that, that people most often ask for in census.gov, and it's what QuickFax is based on. We want to do a visual representation, kind of showing you what you can do with the API and pulling out some basic estimates that you're interested in. We have it for nation, state, and county. Um, so if you'd like to go in and check it out, that would be great. But I'm going to head back. I'm actually going to clear it. If you click on the logo, it clears your search. I'm also going to show you something. A lot, some people love the search, the single search bar, and some people just want the faceted filter. So just showing you that it's here. So if you go to advanced search, you click on that, and here's that filter I was talking about when I was talking about the top 10. So the filter is available, but everything's available here, whereas AFS, it was several filters. So you had to choose your topic, and that was a filter. And then you had to choose your geography, and that was a separate filter. So this is all put in together. So just don't, don't let it surprise you when you see something. But we were just looking at geography. You can look at with the toggle on or off. 
when you put it in on, you might know those summary levels. So you might know that count, uh, the county is 050 and choose that. And then maybe you don't. Um, it, it just really depends. If you don't, you can click it off. And then you can see all of these basic things. So with county, we'll offer you up some things. If y'all want to mute your phone, I'm hearing a dog barking back there. So it's not a big deal for county because it's pretty straightforward, but some things like metro area have several of them that are produced. Um, and it, we just offer up one general one and you can choose um, to use that or you can go back if you know your summary levels and choose what you want. So I'm gonna go to county. I'm going to go to Oregon, and then I'm going to go to Marion County. And then if you see down here, I'm actually going to close this little button that says send feedback to sedside.feedback at census.gov. And you see down here that it's this little chip, this little um, bluish greenish chip that populates with Marion County, Oregon, and then you can do a search. And the same thing comes up, the same idea comes up. So there's a couple of ways that you can get just a general look and start to dip your toes in um, data.census.gov. All right, so I'm gonna clear it and get into something a little bit more, um, maybe a little more interesting. Um, when you're comparing something over time, I'm just showing you a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, some things are best through a filter and some things are, you know, best through a search or some things that really doesn't matter. So a couple of things, we have lots of people who already know their table IDs. You know your table IDs, please just go ahead and search by them, make it available. I'm looking at trying to do some comparisons over time, maybe 2019 to 2015. So a great table to be able to use that is an ACS table called CPO, the CP tables, which are comparison profiles. I was gonna look at some tables um, that talk about housing, and then I was gonna switch over to an income table. So I'm gonna start with a housing table. Again, if you don't know these, these numbers, no big deal. But this is just for those people that do. So the comparative housing characteristics, if you type in CPO4, you can get it. If not, you can always type in housing and see what things come up. But from here, I'm going to the table, showing you this is our table display. It doesn't have a bunch of different tables here because you told, the, you, you told our search that you just wanted CPO4. So it's just gonna narrow down to CPO4. And it doesn't have all of those different, different data sets by year or by one and, and five year because those things are all available right here. In this drop down, you would see and be able to switch between one year or five year or the years that you can go from. So just giving you a basic idea and understanding about what those things are. So from here, we talked about 2019 to 2015 and you scroll over and you can see all of the different things. So it's these years available but I'm gonna go ahead and custom the, the, customize the table because I don't want those middle years. I just wanna see 2019 and 2015. So I'm gonna customize the table by going and hiding and click on the hide button. And it's a little bit easier to see. It's now been moved to the side. And I'm gonna take out all of these other years and other statistical significant markers um, for other years because I really just wanna see 2019 and then I want to see 2018. And then, I, of course, I want to include my 2019 to 2018 statistical significance marker. So from here, and then you see that the, the table has been, um, has been modified in that way. So some of the things that you can figure out, you scroll down and see all of the different year built, be able to see the comparison of what's available. Not a huge difference between things that are built in 1939 or earlier from 2015 and 2019, but then some things have changed and are pretty significant um, in the difference. So one of the things when you look at values definitely increasing um, from 2019, when you look at how home ownership, um, homeowner uh, 
housing, uh, the value of that is definitely increased. And um, from 9.7% um, in 2005, and then you see in 2019, it's 13.1. So definitely some differences there. Big, you know, big jump in median, um, median value from 2015 to 2019. Um, so just some different things that you can see here from finding the tables, especially when looking across, town, uh, across time. So from here, I want to show you some ways that you can go in and either download or export or different ways that you can see. So one of my favorites is to just export the table. So what you do is you do a right click. I know it's hard to do, so actually the latest build shows um, that print and there's also going to be a button for export so you don't have to right click but until then go ahead and right click and it offers a CSV or an Excel and I want an Excel so I'm going to click on Excel and it's going to pop up and it shows your table with the with kind of what we call fully qualified as far as the table and the labels what it doesn't have is the top sourcing, but it, that's something that we're working on to add so that it's, it's fully qualified. You could print that out and send it to somebody and it's got the Census Bureau um, information on it, logo, all of the sourcing attached. But until then, at least this is a table that looks like a table and you can kind of slice and dice it from there if you were doing any changes um, from that way, filtering, all of those things that you can do with an Excel. All right, so from here, I also wanted to show you one other quick thing. So, is to go up and saving your table. So lots of people have gone in, they've maybe gone in and done geographies and maybe added a few more geographies that they were interested in seeing. So going to, um, Oregon, and then adding another geography or something, go in and change those. And then also, so we're now in Baker County, but one thing that's important to show too is that there used to be, and it's actually something we're building right now, is the disconnect between our single search and our advanced search. So what we had to do was to go to the advanced search, and you would have to go in and you would have to type in CPO4 right here in the advanced search and then do search. And if you wanted to change the table, you had to go back in. But what you can do now is that we've added the chip right here in the single search bar. So when you go in and we can decide we want to look at, and we changed it to Baker County, we want to go from, we want to, go from housing comparison profile um, to um, an income and economic comparison profile. And then from here, so it maintains your geography without losing the table. So what was happening before is you do all of this stuff in the advanced search and get what you wanted and see a search bar here change and then it would all disappear and it would just go to the nation. So just giving you a, a, a little bit more options as we're trying to kind of unify both of them, but this is, I think, a great step in getting there. All right. Okay. So from here, let's look at, and I'm going to actually go back to this screen just so that we can keep up with um, the questions that I don't have memorized. Um, from here are the comparing across geographies. So if we wanted to look at I'm sorry, I think I pulled up the wrong, the wrong one. Um, if we wanted to look at across geographies, so across geographies um, for an older population, 60 to 64, with all census tracts in Marion County. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and clear it out, going to the logo. And since I want something like all census tracts in, in a county, that's kind of pretty specific for search to have to go and figure all of that out, especially with the, those collection of geographies. So I'm going to go to, ahead and just skip on to the advanced search. I'm going to start with my topic. 
because I know my topic is going to be the older population. We already talked about that, wanting to be 60 to 64. And then with geography, I've said I want to get track. So I'm going to go track. I'm going to go Oregon. And then I'm going to go to Marion County. And then there, this is what I was talking about, that collection of geography or that one-click pseudo-geography is the ability to, to click here. And those are the ones that we're spending a lot of time on making sure that we have those one clicks, and especially with the, the zip codes that people want so much. But we do have the track level for um, the county, so that's available. Look down at my search filter and see that the topic's there and that um, my tracks within Marion County are there. And then I'm going to search. And from this search, the first one to come back is SO101, and then it goes into more specifics um, within tables, or those small, those detailed tables that are available. Then it goes to maybe a data profile. One thing, I know that ACS does have a table that is of the older population. It has a 60 and over and also 65 and over. But those have some threshold qualifications that are necessary. And so this is, makes sense that it would only return back this general age and sex table. So since you are looking at tracks um, for a five year. So I was looking for 60 to 64, that estimate is right there. And then I look and I do have my, my tracks all available. But I think a better way to look at tracks when you're looking at especially one with a, a, a collection of geographies is to go to the map. So from the map, you can see that it's the Marion County um, tracks available. What this offers right here, because it doesn't have data, is a reference map. So if you're looking for your boundaries or seeing where they are, you can dr drill in and out based on that. Or on the left-hand side, if you want to look at it as more of a thematic map, you can click on age and sex, which is our table, or any of the other tables that you're looking for, and it automatically populates. A few things to um, check. If you're seeing a lot of maybe grayed out areas, go ahead and check and make sure that you're looking at tracks, making sure that, um, or smaller geographies, making sure that, it's, that it doesn't say one year. We get that a lot with counties. Um, it's supposed to default to five year if it only has a five year available, but sometimes it doesn't. So it's good to always go in and check it out. Um, but this does give you five year, shows tracks, which we are looking for. And then here, this is the data variable dropdown. Well, let me show you how to kind of navigate it because when you first look at it, it's very overwhelming. But it is mimicking that table I just showed you, that SO101, that subject table for age and sex. So what it is, is it goes all the way down the column, the, the rows, all of those labels of the rows are here, all the way down. And then the last two, and then it goes to the percent. So I'm, I believe strongly in using percents, especially when you're using um, survey data. So I want to go, when possible, so I want to go down to percent for age 60 to 64 and just click on that. And then it repopulates based on the estimates um, that you've put in. And the nice thing is you can just click and switch whichever estimates that you prefer. Here's the younger four, five to nine population. But go back to my 60 to 64 estimates from there. So great way to look at things. Now a nice thing is you can customize the map. And then over here at view table, of course, you can actually customize the map by, by going in here, looking if you don't like the color palette or want to change the breaks of the data classifications. But when you view table, it doesn't take you back to the table um, as it was sent by the data providers. It sends you the table of the variables that you selected. So since we chose a pseudo geography of these collections of tracts within the county, that's what it's giving us. So it's bringing this back. And then even though it doesn't have the margins of error, which you always have to be mindful of, those are missing. So if you're seeing, you know, a, a one and a, a 1.3 and a 1.5, 
you know it's not necessarily um, one is bigger than the other. It has to be done the significance testing against it. It's not here, but in general, at least it gives you the estimates and you can look. One thing to be added um, for people who'd like to, you can do an ascending or descending if you'd like to see those numbers up and down. Um, and then um, from there you can, oh, and I did go to total population when I went back instead of the percentage. <laughs> it's like that's percentage is wrong. Let me go back and change that. Total pop percent. So, yep, okay. And then go to the, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. And um, so from here you can go up and down if you want the smallest to the largest. You can also go in and do an equals to, apply a filter. If you wanted something that was greater than or equal to maybe five, and then apply the, apply the filter, you can go from there. Oh. I don't think it, it applied. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. Hmm. It's storming here, so I'm hoping that I'm not having a, a glitch in my computer, but let me refresh really quickly. Make sure we're good on my end. Janine, I'm going to interrupt for a minute while we're waiting for this sure. to come up. Uh, someone asked a question about um, it moving so quickly from Kansas to Marion County that they always have to zoom out Pam and zoom in. How did that happen? I noticed that too. So maybe when you go in now, you could show us why. Sure. Let me try again. I think that there hopefully is not a glitch on my side, um, but let me try to do those. Um, that refresh it um, again really quickly. And then I think we did a topic of older population, right? Search. Can I do this? I'm going to go and do the map. And you're right. It goes, it, it centers on kind of the center of the U, U.S., right? And then it goes to where um, it's supposed to. And I'm not sure if that's because it's the API pulling. It's giving the, the shape files time to have the data populate and pull in. I, I'm really not sure. Um, I, could, I could ask, though. Is that, is that what you, is that what the... I think it, yeah, I think it's more so um, the factor that you you have the geography there when you went into the map that it automatically moved to it, correct? So right, the geography is there, right. Yeah, okay. The geography is there, it's just trying, and this is actually a big improvement because if you've used it before, we had a bug that no matter what we did, it it, it, it seemed to come up in the worst times. Pretty much any time I was presenting uh, the map function, it was probably when Heidi was too, um, it would only go to Kansas, and it would just stick in Kansas. You had to kind of manually push yourself over there um, to be available. So this is what I was trying to do, apply the filter. Um, so. Anyway, you can do the filter from here and then comply a filter and move from there. You can also hide it and go back to the, the map if you'd like, or you could go to the full table and click that. And what that means is it's taking you back to that original table that we had. Um, and from here, I wanted to show you a couple things um, um, to show you. So a few things. We talked about doing the, the right click to get to the export the table to make the table and all of the geographies available available in an Excel that looks like the table. But let me show you something. So when you download, if you choose to download off um, from us, from data.census.gov as opposed to when you're doing a right click, you're really doing it from the browser side. When you download, you will receive a flat file. And let me show you what that means in case you're not aware. Um, so you click on that, 
and you're, you can choose as many as you'd prefer, um, many years that you prefer. You're only given a, a five-year and not a one-year. Um, but if you had something like a state, you'd give, be given both and all of the years available. Um, the tracks are only available in five-year. So from here, just showing you what you would get. So depending on your browser, how you would pull it up. But from here, you would get the table, and each of these lines is one full table by geography. So again, great for machine readable, but not necessarily if you wanted to send this to your boss and tell him, look at, look at all these numbers, isn't this exciting? Um, you would really pre probably prefer to do that Excel. So just giving you an idea, I know some people love it and some people hate it. We're right at half and half, and so we're trying to make sure that we're offering everything that we can um, for everyone. So hopefully those, those new updates will, will come soon. So let me go ahead and click off that. Also want to show you one other thing um, that I'm going to go ahead and click on um, from here, even if we were to do a F1701, talked about doing a a poverty one from here. If you go in and customize the table, you can actually print. So if you do a print, it lets you know that if you have a huge table with a ton of geographies, that the back of those geographies are not going to be in this kind of table format. So if you're looking at multiple geographies, probably at least right now, best to go ahead and um, and individually release them. But this allows you to have more of a professional print. It's not the same as having a PDF come in. There's a lot of issues with having a PDF as far as um, just the functionality and the alignment to get everything. But you can save it as a PDF. Um, you can switch your layout. I always like to be in landscape because our tables are so big. And then customize it. And then you can change the scale, make them smaller or bigger, however you'd like it to be. But it does include fully qualified. It has our logo and that it includes our notes too. So that's something that's really important with even with the Census Bureau um, because we have to notarize some tables and everything. So I'm hoping that it's getting a little closer. I know people would like to um, have that same functionality that they had with AFS. I agree, but I just some of our tables don't necessarily align to that. I know I'd have to print out my tables when I was a subject matter, and you'd literally just have to kind of paste because there'd be 45 pages. Um, but so hopefully this is this is helping a little bit more. All right, so we did across geographies. Wanted to show you one quick last thing for those um, people who are interested in the business and industry data. If you go ahead and go to advanced search. Codes is a great one to go to when you're looking for NAICS. So if you're looking for industry codes, you can go to there. Um, one of the things that we're looking for, if you're looking at like traveler accommodations, you can choose all different ways to look how you want your NAICS or to start out with those two base codes. Now I'm going to go down to accommodation and food services, and then you can stop there. If you stop there, you could get the estimates based on 72, but I'm going to keep drilling down because I want accommodation, traveler accommodation. So I'm going to finally stop and click on the box, and that will give you the best results. Press search. Oh, and I'm going to go back because I forgot something. So I'm going to go back to advanced search, and I'm going to go ahead and add a geography to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a year. I want 2017 because I'm looking for econ census to come out. Or, and that's one way we can kind of figure out what we want to do. I'm going to go to metro, oops, metro area. And then I'm going to search just Portland and see what comes up. So we have the Portland, Vancouver, Hillsboro. Metro area, let's see what comes up. So we have the econ basic tables for 2017, and then we pull it up from there. So just showing you there's some different ways. I know econ basic, we're still working on the 2017. It's a flow basis the way the 2020 census will be. But just showing you some different options that you had. Um, you could have gotten the county business pattern option. 
um, but different ones that are available. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you was right here, it's called our resource pages. So first off, we know that y'all have been great at sending us emails and we hope that we have been able to answer your questions. We continue want to do that. But if you're, and if you're interested, there's the feedback button right there and it's directly to our email. Or it's right here under the search if you click on help. Help takes you to our resource page where we've provided <clears throat> all kinds of information on how to use the site. So <clears throat> information about just how to use it or what it is is right here. Guidance for data users all kinds of information, um, and here are the drop downs. All of our frequently asked questions is a great place to start of where to find things. Um, and then materials and how to's, not just about um, data.census.gov, but microdata analysis, things about the API. All of those things just trying to hit at what you're looking for and then maybe if you're looking for that migrated data and finding out what's available, one of our um, FAQs shows you with check marks every data set that's available. So you can go in and make sure you're not driving yourself crazy by looking for something that's not there. But then also go to our transitions from AFF page and you can find out more information where things are and where they're coming from um, and when they'll be available. If we know some of those things are, are very dependent on review and approval. And at 2020 time, it's, you know, that's obviously the priority. It's hard to um, get the older data sets kind of bumped in, in, in priority for that. All right, so one of the last things I wanna show you is something that I always encourage our data users to go to is our news and updates. This includes not just what our public information office broadcasts and lets you know what's available as far as, you know, the 2019 ACS one-year data, but it includes all of our migrated data um, and then also data that are available in microdata access. So this is a great thing. We have releases every Tuesday and Thursday. If you're interested in what's available and what's latest, please come check this out under news and updates. Um, and then you can also go to, if you're looking for our latest code releases and code updates, you can go under guidance for data users to release notes. And what we've done is tried to, here's a document with the information, but we've tried to start off by giving you our latest update, what's available, the links, any kind of defect, the bigger defect resolution, made sure to include that map automatically zooms to your selected area, not to Kansas, um, as well as all of our known issues and things that you might be looking for, what's available, what geographies do we use, all of those things that you might be asking. Um, wanted to show you that it's available there. All right, so one last thing, I think. Um, go from here, and then I wanted to show you oh, just a call, a call to action to um, send us any feedback. And then just uh, to mention, we have a new survey that's available. It's trying to gauge your response and if we're hitting the mark with data.census.gov. And also, what do you need from it? What is the most important thing that you want us to add for these different categories? We'd love it if you took a chance to go there. It's under our resource page. Um, it's in that at the top right here and it links directly to it and you find that under the help button on the landing page. So from there, I wanted to wrap up so that here's my contact information. If you have questions, please let me know. You're also welcome to obviously send anything to our sedsite.feedback at census.gov, but um, also please contact me if you have anything. Um, and then with that, I wanna at least be able to wrap up so we can have some questions if we have, have any. Yes, Kaneen, we do have a few. Oh, great. All right, so I wanted to go ahead and I was gonna let you answer this one because I know you were more intimately involved. Um, so our first one is, why did the census not overlap products so we could continue to retrieve data while you build the new system? 
That's a really great question. Um, and unfortunately, it comes down to resources, not just money resources, but also the people that were maintaining and handling it. Um, the ASF, um, the resources that we had for ASF, two huge dissemination systems, not just data.census.gov, but AFS, very, very expensive. And then some of the people who were working, um, for a while it was the same people that were working on data.census.gov and AFS, and so we were splitting, splitting our resources, and that's what it came down to, money and people. Um, and we, uh, this, you know, went all the way up to the Department of Commerce, and they said we have to, we have to let one go if we're if we're going to keep moving forward with data about census stuff up. But I agree with you. It, it you know especially on the communication side and working with data users, would have loved to have kept it on just just so that there's not anything missing. Um, but definitely de de determined to kind of help you any way that you need to. If you can send an, an email, um, if we're not available within the the pseudo geography, is that that's missing? We can. Um, you know, show you ways to pull the API or even pull it for you. Um, but we understand you're in a you're in a tight spot of needing the data, and um, I, you know we definitely appreciate that. And um, please bear with us. So we'll we'll do what we can to to help you um, get the data you need until it's all um, migrated and available. All right, Kaneen. And then um, another uh, question is, um, I guess, question slash comment is, I tried this new tool. Uh, was limited to just two population characteristics due to the column slash row limitation, and they were looking for um, commuting time by occupation by Zikta, and the tool had died. Now doesn't work yet. It only has nowhere to do any historical. Okay, so are you? We've got somebody talking. If you could just go ahead and mute, please, or do star six to mute yourself. So one of the things uh, to be aware of is just our big tables. So I, I, it sounded like there's two questions there. Does that seem fair, Heidi? That one was just the size of the table and not being able to view it, and then the other was finding the table. Is that correct? Um. So it looks like yeah. So it looks like yeah. They were limited. Yeah, I think part of it. Yes, you're right. Is size and then function. Right. So if we do an industry. They, they, were, yeah, they were limited to two population characteristics due to the column and row limitation. Right. So that's part of something that we're trying to work with the data providers. These We haven't changed the tables and how they were released in AFS. And many of these tables come from remnants of decennial, um, and they're very, very wide and have a lot of different columns and, and just quite frankly aren't very um, very friendly to screens and um, having something be seen. You're going to have to scroll over to see those. Um, it's something that we're trying to work with um, with the data providers to have, you know, some more um, just standardization, have, have a better layout, maybe a, a cube design where it's um, you choose a cross and be able to view it. Um, but all of those things just, you know, the, there's a lot of um, work behind all of that um, and a lot of kind of decision making to get that. But with that, um, I think it's kind of what you're, you're trying to, to talk about. Um, and I don't necessarily know, so means of transportation to work by industry is the table that came up. And I'm not sure if this table actually allows you to go down to did you, was it by Zikta? Yes. Okay, so let me see what's available. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me play around with it a little bit and see if there's something that I'm doing wrong on my end or if it's um, just not available with that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not seeing 860 available with this table. So let me let me see if there's there's something else, and um, can definitely get back get back to Charles. I guess would be appropriate. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Okay, and then can you um, 
moving along. Oh. So I think we've got um, – so we had a question about is there a single place one can find all the table numbers. So Charles went ahead and gave a couple suggestions in data.census.gov um, and then also provided, you know, we've got the tables through uh, ACS. But is there a place that you have, um, you know, you show on the help page the the data sets and the years that are available. Do you have something through data.census.gov that shows all the tables? No, but we do have something um, available in, um, oh, sorry. I'm trying to answer the last question instead. Um, so one thing I think I noticed with the issue was that when I tried mine, why I couldn't get to Zictus is because um, when I went up to the drop down, it had defaulted to one year instead of five year. So that may be the issue if you want to check on yours. Because from here, then I'm able to pull up the table um, by Zicta for that B. Oh, eight, one, two, six. Um, and then the other question um, was about. Just um, is there a source in data.census.gov where you can find all the table numbers? We know in Charles provided the, you know, the resource that we have through the ACS website for that, but. Right. No, we don't. We don't have a okay. link. We, we just send people to the ACS website partially because we don't want to overbuild within our site because once we do integrate with census.gov, we don't want to have all of these additional, um, that's one of the reasons why our resource page is actually on census.gov so that we don't have resource page that then have to be migrated from data.census.gov into census.gov. Um, but no, I just send people to, I think it's under data, isn't it? Or technical documentation. Yeah, Charles, um, yeah and Charles sent the link to everybody in the Okay, chat. perfect. Yes, that's the only one I know of. Okay, thanks. And then what version does, of Excel does data.census.gov support? Oh, goodness. I, I don't know, but I could find that out. Um, I do know that we are in the process of trying to limit um, browser support um, because of, of just how many defects we get to where we can't, with all of the different browsers that we can't actually build features because we're spending so much time having, you know, 100 different defects on 15 different versions of IE um, and older versions. So we've kind of limited what um, browsers we've used. But I, I don't know about Excel. Um, I, I can find out. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have a question. Um, so it says, uh, what should be in the statistical, statistical significance column? And then it, and then oh. I think it, and then it says all, and then it says all um, asterisk. Oh, so I, an asterisk means that it's statistically significant. One year is statistically significant from another year. Let me get back to and show you CPO four, which is the housing. And from here, I think the, um, there is, if you go to customize table, there's the data notes. And in the data notes, it'll tell you somewhere in all of this um, that one, oh, here. Uh, a one asterisk indicates that the estimate is, is significantly different at a 90% confidence interval than the estimate from the most current year. A C indicates the estimate for that year, um, and the current year are both controlled. Um, does that make sense? Okay, thanks, Kaneen. Yep, sure. So the, the, the asterisk just means that you can say it's greater than or less than. So for housing, you can say that there's been an increase, you know, um, in in, you know, there was a, or excuse me, an increase um, in 2019, between 2019 and 2018 um, of, of total housing units. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we already addressed 
that he um that you you all were able to make that little fix to keep us away from hanging out in Kansas and moving to our current geography, <laughs> right. which we appreciate. Um, and I think that's about um, about it. Um, and just yeah, to let everybody know, because we've seen a few questions, that the recordings from today and the uh, PowerPoints will be shared with everybody. All right, and with that, I think okay. we can um, go ahead and Charles, I think, have a little break here, right? Yes, uh, we're going to start up the next session also with Kaneen uh, at, uh, in about 10 minutes, uh, come back at no earlier than 1010, but probably a little closer to uh, 1013 or so. We'll get started with microdata access. Thanks, Kaneen, for, for the uh, data.census.